I'm going to I'm going to read to you the opening of a poem by Cavafy, which is called "Waiting for the Barbarians." What are we waiting for? Assembled in the forum, the barbarians are due here today. Why isn't anything going on in the Senate? Why are the senators sitting there without legislating? Because the barbarians are coming today. What's the point of senators making laws now? Once the barbarians are here, they'll do the legislating. Cultural diversity is the norm of human experience. Out of the 192 countries that are members of the United Nations, only 42 of them have a state religion. That means that 150 of them recognize the diversity within their borders. People who only speak one language, will you hold your hands up? Monoglots are a minority of our global population. Most people in the world speak at least two languages. Many people speak many more than two languages, which means many of us have cultural diversity written into our brains. Until the First World War, Europe was a deeply diverse continent. There were Hungarians and Romanians and Muslims and Uniates and Orthodox and Jews living side by side in every town and city across the continent. The terrible thing about our 20th century is that we spent 50 years of it killing each other in order to try and make our territories neater, tidier, ethnically cleansed. And we succeeded up to a point in creating an entirely fictional Europe in the 1950s, a, a Europe that looked as if it was homogenous, that looked as if it was culturally unified, that people pretty much looked as if they belonged where they lived. What's been happening since, I believe, is simply that Europe has been reintegrating the global norm of different peoples living side by side, using different cultures and languages and faiths to speak to each other, to communicate, having to negotiate the reality that human beings are not all the same and never will be, and thank God. And the same way that I think social justice and social inclusion don't get us very far in this discourse. What interests me is social exclusion, social injustice, because I can see those things. I can't see social inclusion. I don't know what it is. How much fairness is enough fairness? How much social inclusion or cultural inclusion is enough? <coughs> I don't know. We would all answer that question differently. But I think that we can see cultural exclusion. We can see processes that keep people out unjustifiably. I think the starting point and the ending point for all of this debate is that we live in democracies. We live in imperfect democracies, but we live in democracies. And we need to challenge ourselves and our democracies to live up to the statements that we make about those democracies that every citizen is equal, and that what matters is that people have full, free, and equal participation in the nature of our democracy, and that means in our cultural life. As I said at the beginning, I think cultural diversity is a fact of life, and I think it's way past time we grew up and <coughs> accepted that fact. And then we might begin to be able to see what some of the injustices in our cultural life are and what we need to do about them. I'll finish by returning to Kabaki. 
and reading you the end of his poem. He says, Why this sudden bewilderment, this confusion? How serious people's faces have become. Why are the streets and squares emptying so rapidly? Everyone going home lost in thought. Because night has fallen and the barbarians haven't come. And some of our men just in from the border say there are no barbarians any longer. Now what's going to happen to us without barbarians? Those people were a kind of solution. Thank you.